Okay, so um, if anybody can get on Wi-Fi and wants to follow along, you can go to hypothesis slash alpha. Today is the first day that we're pushing uh, something that people can actually use out there. Uh, it is a Chrome extension. Uh, so if you click uh, on that link, it will uh, launch the little interstitial page from the Chrome store, and you can install it into your browser. Um, also, there's a bookmarklet here um, that you can grab and put uh, up on your bookmark uh, bar if um, you are not using Chrome um, or if you want to use it. Uh, um, uh, also, you'd be able to embed this as, as an embedded um, JavaScript on a page. Um, so bookmarklets are important. There's one there if you want to use it. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is just take um, you through some of the uh, little pieces of the application and really just talk about uh, design decisions. Um, this is early prototype code. It's buggy. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, and hopefully it will get better. The important thing for us is to try to think about how to solve um, challenges that we might have as we try to annotate all of human knowledge. So, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, let's try to break those down into some different components. So, the first um, thing that uh, might be, so let's try to find a web page here on the net. There we go, um, our friends at PeerJ. The first, uh, let's pop this extension. It should show on our page here at some point. No, there it is. So that will speed up. Um, so I'm signed in to the extension right now. Uh, our goal is to implement um, annotation on the web in layers. So there's a user interface layer that might be in your browser. Um, there's also a storage layer um, that should be able to be accessed through an API. You might want to use the user interface um, and access multiple storage providers. Uh, so let's say that you're inside of a company and the uh, company annotates the documents, uh, corporate documents that are not available outside the firewall. Um, you might actually be signed into multiple storage providers at the same time. Um, you should be able to do that through the user interface. Uh, right now, we only allow accessing a single provider at a time, but the provider that you're signed into is visible up here. Um, so Hypothesis is a project, it's not a brand. Um, there's no branding on the user interface. This is open source software that you can download. Um, you can run as a layer on top of your own content against your own storage layer. Uh, and if you're signed into uh, a store, that store shows um, after the username uh, up there in the upper right hand corner. Um, so let's just create an annotation here uh, on this page. Um, I can just select some text um, and say something pithy uh, and then save that. And then that annotation um, is visible. Um, if I roll over the uh, uh, tab here on the right hand side. So what are we trying to do here? A couple things. One is that annotation um, up till now has often been kind of implemented as a sticky note kind of user, uh, user experience paradigm. So you, all the annotations are competing for real estate on the page. If we imagine 100 years in the future with 10 million annotations on top of the Bible, um, they can't all be sticky notes. It just doesn't work. So how do we disintermediate the annotation layer from the page layer? Um, good question. So that's a user interface challenge that we have explored. Um, as of other people with a sidebar um, approach, um, you can pop it out, see what the annotations uh, are that are on the page, um, and scroll um, to, to find additional ones. Uh, if um, I can reply to this here, so I've, there's threaded conversation. 
Um, we've chosen a threaded paradigm right now. We also think flat um, conversation is interesting. Uh, there's no reason why uh, you can't take this same um, conversation paradigm and implement a, a flat view. Um, we're experimenting with a couple different user interface approaches for that. Maybe you can toggle between the two or choose whether the annotation that you've created should uh, enable a threaded conversation after it or a flat conversation. Uh, if um, I want to share this annotation or this subpart of a thread, I can click the share icon. There's a URL. All uh, Annotations are first order objects, so all parts of the uh, reply chain are also annotations, and they all have their own unique URLs. Hmm. Cool. So if I wanted to tweet uh, this annotation and my like this, then I could do that. Hopefully, at some point here in the future, that will go out to the universe once the Wi-Fi kicks in. Um, if I go to a web page and I type that URL in as though I've clicked on it uh, on Twitter and I hit return, then that pulls up an interstitial uh, page um, right now that looks like this. It says hypothesis at the top of it only because it's coming from our servers because our storage layer is the one um, that we are signed into. Pardon me while I kind of do that. I'll only do that once. Um, we will be implementing a intercept um, mode by the extension so that if you have the extension installed and you click on a link that is an annotation link, then the extension will intercept that, take you straight to the source page, pop the sidebar out, and actively scroll to the annotation uh, and without having to go to that first to that interstitial page. Um, we wanted to have that working today. We weren't able to get it done, um, but th that should be ready and available on GitHub uh, in the next couple weeks. Right now, this is in order for you to see, and if you go to this PeerJ page and you want to see this annotation that I've just made, you ha and you have the extension installed, you have to reload the page in order for those annotations to, that I just made to refresh so that you can see it. Um, we are just almost, we wanted to have it done for today, but um, should have shortly implemented a f an actual live update capability using uh, Pouch uh, DB and Couch DB, um, Pouch in the browser and, and Couch DB uh, on the server so that um, the um, um, up annotations that I made will show up live on through the extension if you're on the page um, that I'm annotating. So that sh stuff should be done in, uh, in about a week uh, or two. So if we go to a page, um, so let's go to a, another page that has um, more annotations on it. Here's a they're one of our friends in the room. So here's, uh, we can see that there's already a bunch of annotations. Um, there are 10 annotations below me. I can use the up and down tabs to scroll to them, pop the sidebar out, and see what's, um, what's there. Click, there's the threaded conversation. Um, I can collapse that. If I want to create more room or quickly go to the next um, batch of threads. The other really interesting thing, especially in the scientific world, in the world of journals, is that a lot of times you have an HTML page and a PDF page of the same article. So ideally, I'd want to annotate the HTML page and have those same annotations show up automatically on the PDF. Um, and vice versa, I'd want to be able to annotate that PDF and have the annotation show up on the HTML without having to do anything special. So we're working on that too. We have an initial um, implementation of it. Um, so hopefully this will work. 
So right now, the PDF component works in Firefox because Firefox just pushed PDF.js out about a month ago, um, uh, which is na their native uh, PDF renderer inside the browser. Uh, so if I go to the PDF link on this, cool, let's try PureJ, because PureJ does PDFs too. Oops, but I have to do that on, uh, Ian, you might check your, uh, PDF server. <laughs> okay, so. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's do this. Let's create a uh, an annotation. I've got the right bookmarklet. Hmm, interesting. So let's see, I've created a two. Actually, make sure this, five minutes? Okay, cool, thanks. Try this. Naturally, we have demo problems. So, um, apologize for that. Um, it's working, I promise. Uh, it was working last night. Uh, so let me just explain kind of why, it's, why this is cool and why it's important. Um, content exists in many different forms, um, and we want to be able to annotate the same things wherever they are. Also, things change. So uh, the same article uh, on the New York Times webpage may get updated throughout the morning with additional content. The annotation that you've made uh, to a sentence um, may have a spelling error that gets changed, or the sentence on either side um, of the annotation that you made changes slightly, or the paragraph gets moved uh, later in the article. So we want annotations that are robust to changes and also uh, able to exist and to span uh, format types um, when we're annotating the same thing. So um, the, this is kind of a grand challenge of annotation that people have been working on and thinking about for 10 or 20 years. Um, there's papers on it. Um, it's kind of a whole uh, a, uh, scholarly uh, focus area. Um, and some interesting work has been done recently to think about how to create kind of fuzzy uh, annotations. Um, by using co the content itself as the anchor as opposed to using structural elements of the page like XPath and, and elements of the DOM. And so what we've done is uh, uh, taken some of that best thinking, thinking and implemented a, a prototype toolkit library which is available on GitHub now um, called Fuzzy Anchoring uh, to uh, basically take a sentence or the selected bit of text in the framing context on either side of that and use that as the thing that references um, what's being annotated. Uh, and to use fuzzy logic on those context anchors that frame that text to be able to stick to uh, that original, um, that, that document and that text. So that's uh, just been finished. Um, the early alpha version of it, Christoph has been um, working diligently on that. 
uh, and it's live, it's in the application. I wanted to be able to show that to you. But all of the annotations that are being made right now through the system are using that logic. So um, even though we haven't got the PDF uh, uh, thing just working just right yet, um, the, uh, cont the, the, the fuzzy anchoring is built into the system. If the page changes a little bit, actually the annotation that you see, the selection that you see, actually shows strike throughs um, where um, what's coming back from the page is different than what the annotation originally pointed to. So there's uh, an actual, some diff logic in there too. Uh, so I'm gonna stop there um, and uh, um, just say uh, thank you uh, to Josh uh, Greenberg, uh, who's our, uh, who at Sloan, who's been uh, an extraordinary supporter of ours over the last year uh, for their, um, um, their confidence in us and turn uh, the mic over to Nick, uh, and then we'll have Paolo just after that. <laughs>